Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day today. In my last video, I went to a GM Energy charging station just to check it out. It was a new install and, and that's really great that there's a lot of infrastructure going in, both from the private sector and the public sector. You know, with the Navi funding, put a lot of charging stations in. That's gonna really help uh, lead the way to mass EV adoption. I had a lot of great comments in the comment section. I really appreciate everyone's engagement. You know, this is really going to help educate the public on, a, on electric vehicle charging. So let me go ahead and uh, read this one, one comment I got, and, and we're going to discuss this. What bothers me about this and others is that, once again, EVs are getting judged on how well they go on road trips when the overwhelming majority of people are only driving 34 miles a day. That is correct. We're judging a product based on the edge cases. This is like saying a chainsaw is a bad tool because less than 1% of users cut their fingers off. We need to stop treating charging stations like they're electric gas stations. Why should I care about X stations charging 60 cents a kilowatt hour? I've seen it as high as $1.12 a kilowatt hour. That's pretty high. But when I charge at home for 5 cents. If you want the benefits of a new technology, that technology needs to be treated differently not just more of the same. This comment brings up a lot of valid points and we're gonna discuss it. So let's go ahead and get into this. Before I address this comment, please take a moment to go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate all your support. And this really helps put this content out to others who, who may really need this or can benefit from this information. So let's go ahead and get into this comment. Like the commenter made some very valid points about the number of people who are able to charge at home and it's currently anywhere between 80 and 90 percent depending on what source you're looking at so that's quite a few people so that means you probably have anywhere from 20 to 15 percent of people who are are reliant on the public charging infrastructure now uh that's that's not bad and it's so much more convenient to charge at home and i i made these same arguments that this this uh commenter is also making and that's the great thing about engaging with the, in the comment section with all the uh, the different views of the channel because i learned a lot i learned a lot of things and sometimes you can kind of get caught up in your own world and you forget that we're talking about mass ev adoption so as of right now we're probably right under 10 percent ev adoption in the u.s market so that means that 90% of, of vehicles on the road are internal combustion and they are not electric vehicles. So the more electric vehicle charging expands, fewer and fewer people are gonna be able to charge at home. And that's just a fact. The, the comment also compared it to using a chainsaw to saying that, okay, if only 1% of people cut their finger off, is a chainsaw a bad tool? And I would say the answer is no. But when we look at electric vehicles, we look at mass EV adoption, we're talking over 30% of people will not be able to charge at home. And that's probably a conservative estimate because you have to look at the number of people who live in apartments and that's probably like 30, anywhere from 25 to 30%, depending on the sources you're looking at. So that's a huge number right there that won't be able to charge at home and, and going to have to rely on public charging. Also, you have people who are, who have street side parking. And that was something that was brought to my attention. I live in the, in the suburbs and, and sometimes you can forget about other people's living situation. I happen to work in the city, so I, I can drive through and see, it's like, oh, okay. This is gonna be challenging because if you have street side parking, you're not gonna be able to charge your home not unless you can have some type of setup on the street. You also have the situation where people live in older homes where they would have to upgrade their electrical service to be able to charge an electric vehicle or to add an electric vehicle charger. And so those are, so those are some true barriers to EV adoption. And that, I think that's probably one of the biggest barriers. And just imagine that you buy a car, you spend a lot of money on this car, and then it's not over yet. Now you got to figure out a way to, to put some fuel in this vehicle. And that onus is on you to do that. And so the option is either to rely on a public charging infrastructure, which is, is not as convenient as a gas station, or you can install your own charger at your house which may come at significant cost, if you can even do it. And so there are a lot of people, and, and I'm not even sure what that number is, but it's probably over 35% of people, maybe 40% of people are not gonna be able to uh, charge at their home. So, and, and then also consider that some people, you know, they, they don't have garages. I mean, it's a lot of, uh, 
there's so many scenarios where it'd be challenging if someone really wanted to add a you know drive an ev and they didn't have access to charging at home you know because of some of the barriers i mentioned they're going to re have to rely on the public charging infrastructure and i would have to say that yes it would need to be like a gas station and for early adopters it's probably not a big deal because people or early adopters like myself and i'm sure that a lot of you watching this video you're risk takers so you're, you're willing to take that risk but there are a lot of groups of people that are not willing to take that risk people tend to like things that are familiar to them as far as ev charging stations being like gas stations uh, i would have to say for me that's not necessary However, I'm an electric vehicle owner and like a lot of you, electric vehicle owners are risk takers and you're willing to put up with some inconveniences for the sake of the advancement of technology or, or either enjoying this new technology and being a part of the rev revolution. But most people are not like that. Uh, most people do not like change. And so that is why it is a good idea to make these charging stations as much like gas stations as possible if you want to get to mass EV adoption because people like what's familiar to them. Most people, if they own a car, they have to go to a gas station to, to put some gas in their car. And a lot of people shop at gas stations. And this is one thing, you know, when I was on my way home the other day, I stopped by a gas station to get some windshield washer fluid for my, my rear end here. And I noticed that a lot of cars were parked at the pump and they weren't pumping gas. And there were a lot of cars just parked in front of the store. And when I went inside, there was a long line in the store. You know, people were shopping. They were getting all different type of items from their store. So people don't just use gas stations just to get gas. They use them as, as convenience stores. That's really where the gas stations make the majority of their money. So that is a good opportunity for some charging stations. And it, it would be so much better during this transition if they were set up like a gas station, in my opinion. But I want to know what you think. Uh, I really want to know what you think in the comments and please comment below and you know I might feature your comment in my next video also because this is really how we get these conversations started and how we can really you know put everything out there as far as the pros and cons of, of EV adoption and you know because some people may not be a benefit to them right now to to switch over but yeah go ahead and comment in the comment section and based on this I don't believe that this should be considered an edge case because people and some of you that's probably watching this video, probably, or electric vehicle owners, you have to rely on the public charging infrastructure. In fact, someone did in the comment section did say that they did not have a, a way to charge at home and they did rely on the public charging infrastructure to charge a vehicle. So right now the numbers may be small, but the number of electric vehicle owners are also small. You figure, like I said, it's like 10%. We're, we're right below 10, we might hit 10%. Um, adoption rate this year so that's a a long way away from 100 percent or either even 30 percent for that matter so if you use that same chainsaw analogy and we apply it to the actual numbers where as far as mass adoption where 40 percent of people may not be able to charge at home that that mean, would mean that if there was a 40 percent chance that the chainsaw would cut your finger off would it be a bad tool yes uh that would be a tool that would not be sold in stores. It would not be uh, because you're talking about almost half the people that use it is going to cut a finger off. So, and that is the, those are the type of things we really need to be considering and not just on personal situation. I know that can be difficult sometimes to kind of to think outside of your personal experience or the experience of people that are in your immediate uh, circle because you probably have a lot more in common. Uh, but you know, think about other people's circumstances and that I mentioned in this video. But I, I would like to really know your thoughts on this and some of, let me know some of the other uh, drawbacks uh, that you may see as far as some barriers to mass EV adoption because these things are going to have to be addressed. Uh, people are, you know, that are apprehensive about getting EVs they should know all the pros and cons of it and it's going to be different for every person not everyone's going to have the same pros and cons as far as ev ownership but let me know in the comment section and we can engage again but that's all i have for today i'd like to thank you for joining me once again and i can't wait to see you on the next video